Well, first on Biden, I fully support uh, that the Western leaders finally named the problem as what it is. It's Putin continuously staying in power. That's the key challenge for the peace and stability and the prosperity of the world. I mean, let's not hide behind this academic discussion. Should we discuss regime change or should we not? Let's, I think the, the, the solution begins from naming the problem. The problem is uh, a mad uh, dictator which uh, essentially got detached from reality over 20 years in power and uh, he's absolutely delusional and he's ready to do whatever he can to uh, destabilize the global order. So uh, kudos to President Biden for actually naming that. Whether that implies regime change, I mean, it was not clear and it's not clear that, that this is what we should be immediately talking about. But uh, I think, again, uh, I applaud for him that he finally named the problem as it is. Now, on internal coup, uh, let's not have some rosy hopes about that, because it's very difficult. It's, it's, di it's different from Soviet times when we had a, a more or less legitimate collective governing body like Politburo, uh, which we can, could have deposed uh, secretaries general. We don't have that anymore. It's just president versus complete vacuum. Anyone who deposes Putin uh, would, would have to prove that everyone has to obey his orders. Second thing, everybody is surveyed by security services 24-7. If they even have like a two, three person gathering to discuss that, that would be immediately reported. Now, this is not to mention that the relations between different military, paramilitary security structures are very uneasy. Putin has his own 50,000 uh, security guard uh, for Seoul, which is not governed by anybody else but him, and which also incorporates uh, communications. So you can't cut off him as uh, the, the uh, instigators of coup d'etat in 91 did to Gorbachev. So that's extremely complicated, and uh, I wouldn't bet on that. Vladimir, then, if we talk about the implications that there will not be regime change and that potentially there may be some form of a ceasefire or peace agreement, it's hard to see that sanctions would be aggressively rolled back, which leaves Russia in a very difficult situation around self-reliance and looking for partnerships here. Can you just talk about that? Because we've seen Russia trying to create a, its own payment system. It's tried to forge technology relationships with China. But without large-scale access to sell its energy to the West, doesn't that leave Russia in a very difficult situation long term? Yes, uh, it's an extremely difficult situation. And generally, I think this will be a very important uh, academic example for the books of how deglobalization works uh, for such a big country, such a big market. That's unprecedented, never happens before. And Russia is being disconnected from virtually everything, uh, financial economic systems, technologies, logistics, uh, and so on. That will have a devastating impact. Uh, we don't feel it yet in full swing, but it will come uh, further on in the next uh, few months uh, with, with all major problems uh, across the board and economy, financial markets, commodities, technology, whatever. Uh, yeah, that leaves Russia in a very different position for years. And this is why, coming back to the idea of a coup, I think the good news is that Putin's system as such has suffered uh, such a strong blow to its structural integrity that it never experienced and probably would not be able to survive in the longer term. So even the people who are working in the system, they might not revolt against Putin, but they will simply start stop working, uh, at least uh, go at the so-called Italian strike. 